Hi, I'm Fabi from Bar Woodworks. In this video, I show you how to make a floating key shelf. I'm the kind of guy who's always searching for his keys because I don't put them where they should go. Hence, I wanted to create something that is so much fun to put your keys there that I will actually use it. Let's get to it. For the shelf board itself, I used 52mm light edge oak and for the key chains, walnut. After mounting the edging shoe to the sliding table, I ripped the oak board to width. Then I turned over to the jointer and set the guard to the suitable height. This is one of the most critical parts for me of staying safe at the jointer. After jointing, I made the conversion from jointer to planer. It always feels a little like playing transformers. Rough board going in, plain and smooth board coming out. At the panel saw, I cut the boards to its final width. In order to get the live edge smooth and free of splinters, I started with a nylon brush attached to my drill. This works pretty well to get rid of rough splinters and thin layers of bark. Afterwards, I give the edge a quick sanding with my random orbital sander with 120 and 220 grit. Certainly feels smooth now. Time to make the key hooks. With my biggest straight bit, I routed a rabbit on the front edge of the bottom of the shelf. Therefore, I used a MDF offcut as a guide. The rabbit places the key hooks a little further back and creates a nice shadow line. Here I marked the locations for the seven hooks. The MDF spacer I line up to my mark is the exact distance from the edge of the base plate of my router to the center of the bit, plus 3 mm. Another guide acts as the stop. With my 12 mm straight bit, I establish the first cut. In order to widen the cut, I inserted a 6 mm spacer and get a cut that is 18 mm wide after the second cut. And because of the 3 mm offset of the spacer, my cut is perfectly centered to my line. Then I switched my router bit to a 15 degrees dovetail bit. I repeated the same process as I did with the straight bit and got the dovetail grooves that act as the key hooks. For the matching key chains, I decided to take walnut as a contrast and make it even fancier with some brass inlays. After removing the live edge and jointing the first face side, I jointed the first edge and planed it to 30 mm thickness. Next, I ripped it to 25 mm strips and cross cut them to 35 mm length. Consequently, I had a bunch of cuboids. Lifting the sander onto my router table is not my favorite game. However, I set the miter gauge of my sander to 75 degrees and sand the cuboids to a triangular shape like a dovetail, which fits the slots in the board. At the drill press, I created a 6 mm hole in the tip of the triangle. In order to inlay the 6 mm brass pipe into this hole, I set the fence of my bandsaw a little wider than the keychains and cut the pipe to pieces. After that, I mixed up some epoxy. With a toothpick, I applied the epoxy to the inside of the holes in the keychains and inserted the brass pipes. I cleaned out the epoxy that gathered in the inside of the pipes and let it dry. Since the tubes were a little oversized on purpose, I sanded them flush. And at that point I was really in love with this project. Then I resawed every walnut triangle into two pieces, 12.5 mm each. A bit more sanding and rounding over the edges gave the keychains their final shape. As a finish, I rubbed on several coats of blonde shellac. To give the board its floating look, I used floating shelf brackets that are hidden in the board itself. I marked where they should go and transferred it over to the edge that faces the wall. For the holes of the thorns of the bracket, I pulled out a 13mm auger bit. Since freehand drilling the holes never ends up square, I made a guide block at the drill press and failed. The RPM was way too high and the bit got pulled into the wood. The handle slipped out of my hand and the drill press completely stopped. After changing the belt for the lowest speed, I could drill the hole just fine. I aligned the guide block to my mark and started to drill. As the bit became too short, I removed the guide block and drilled without it. Then I traced the shape of the base plate and marked my waist. With a straight bit set a hair proud of the thickness of the base plate, 
I locked the depth stop of the router into place. When I wanted to start the router, nothing happened because I'm an idiot. Once plugged in, I removed the material in several passes. Since it will be hidden, I went a bit over the lines to make sure it fits. A little screw into a hole of the thorn makes sure the board is secured to the brackets. I used my combination square to transfer the hole location of the underside of the board before I drilled and countersunk the holes. All edges except for the two facing the wall received a little round over with a block plane or a chisel. While I sent the board to 220 grit, let me thank you for watching my video. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Subscribe right now by clicking the subscribe button below this video and follow along as I build more cool projects. Seriously, I'm not gonna stop sending until you've hit that button. Thanks. Now let's go ahead. Again, I used shellac for the finish. I applied it with a simple piece of cloth and gave it a 500 grit sanding in between coats. Finally, it was time to hang it to the wall. Before marking my corners, I made sure it is level. Then I measured to the center of the thickness of the board on each corner and connected the two points. I laid out where the center of the first bracket will be and transferred the distance between the two. After extending these marks, I could place the brackets on the wall and mark where the screws will go. I drilled the holes, inserted some wall plugs and screwed the floating brackets into place. Sliding the board onto the brackets when everything fitted perfectly was extremely rewarding. With the two little screws underneath I secured the board from slipping off the brackets. The very last step was to attach the key chains to my keys and finally hang them to the board. And here it is. I really like the result and it makes me unbelievably happy to put my keys onto the shelf. I find pleasure in the fact that I have a dovetail key change with me when I leave the house. That reminds me of the beautiful craft of woodworking. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. If you want to make this project yourself, go and check out the website as there is more info on the materials and tools I've used. If you just want to keep on watching, I'm going to link you another cool video over here.